It gets harder every time. Oh, trip, oh, you. Trip's face. That's what she said. <laughs> it's just it just it's counts counting us in every time, and well, it just it's, it's one count for one thing, and I'm like, well, that's the one where you clap, and then it's another count, and I'm like, well, I've already clapped, so I don't know what's going on. Because you, you, you don't listen. Right. Like, uh, you didn't say anything. You just was just I like, did. right? You were like, press trips, record. And we start recording. Becoming known for having a soapbox to stand on now. Like, is this going to be the new Tesco club card? That oh. was that resonated with the community. Uh, that's all I'm saying. People right. were calling me out of the blue. They were saying, you're a brave man. <laughs> Standing up to big Tesco. These club card nerds over here being just like, just get a club card, mate. I had no. people in Tesco walk up to me and say, mate, why have you got that trip on? He's a mug. I said, I know, right? The yeah, guy trying to bring me down. Card. Trying to bring yeah. me down. <laughs> I don't want to hear what I'm saying, but Simon. I'm, I'm not going to stop talking about it until we move on to this next topic, Simon. Simon, I've just <laughs> noticed, I just saw you cheating. Well, do you, how did me? you cheat? I just saw you cheating in what flesh and blood. About? No, I'm joking. In in drinking. Is he having a sip? Oh, He's had a sip. Simon. You have I to could, wait. I, I couldn't so, we have a good Refrain five minutes yourself. of looking at the beer, being like, I'd really like to drink that, Mine's but Hamish is talking about New Horizons or New World or whatever it is, but we're going to get to the beer bit soon. It's going to be I'm fine. Level, it's I'm be almost great. level 20 at Oh, New God, Horizons. no. We can't. We already did a zero. No, no, no. <laughs> right, okay. <laughs> My beer has been sat there chilling in the glass for the last 45 minutes. Oh, get mine. <laughs> Hamish just walks away. He's just walked away. He's and not got his beer. That's why. It was too oh, tempting. Sad. Yeah, it is very tempting. While well, Hamish is not here, I'm a little, little sip. It's like there's a bit of condensation on the glass. It's nice. It's settled well. We could we could mess with the system. You could tell me what you're drinking right now. While Hamish Hell no, no. Hamish. Hamish. We can't do that. We can't do that. Hell the no. <laughs> no. I was really, I was wanting to know, you know. We... Better not be doing this without me, boys. No, we're I not. We're not. We're waiting for you. We're you waiting for you. Better not be. I am excited. He's got a big glass. I think we're... I think you'll be surprised at my beer choice today. Hamish, uh, what are you doing? Right, let's just get today? let's just let's just get stuck oh, in. Hamish, thank you, Simon. Hamish, so... you push the point podcast episode fourteen. What are you drinking today? Fuck's oh, sake, right? <laughs> <laughs> I've got <laughs> I've got an Estrella. <laughs> I've got an Estrella. Right. Do you know what? That's really strange because that was my very close second choice pick today, which was I didn't really? go with. Oh, is this it's, is this the first time that it's also picked... in the fridge? Yeah. It wasn't well, quite your pack one, pick one, was it, Simon? It wasn't quite uh, your pack one, pick uh, one. Uh, uh, well, oh, most of, uh, oh yeah, my, my, this is my pack. This is like a coat of frost. I couldn't give a <laughs> one, damn. One. <laughs> um, I've just noticed that this is almost the first time that uh, someone has close close to picking what I've picked because usually it's used to having a hug in the corner going oh yeah we do oh, seem to have nice. similar similar beer tastes me and you Simon. do and I'm sitting again I'm just the boring guy but then uh, I don't know I, I, I'm, not, I'm not I can't be utterly boring I, if, if I run out of beer that's when um, you know the comfortizer or oh. I don't know da, Daz never Daz forget in, Daz in a shot glass I don't know <laughs> starts coming out i'm like have you ever watched the young ones uh yes, yes. i have it's Not a british a long time, it's though. a british show to uh, to our american audience as we noticed actually that we have a a pretty decent american audience almost 50 50 brits oh, no. uk so yeah, uh, so go US. check it out there's there was a very good uh show um called the young ones and uh, there's a character on it called vivian who is feels like he's very close to my heart that he would just down bleach or something stupid just to get drunk. So. Yeah, don't 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 drink bleach, don't, kids. No, no, but, but don't drink but bleach. But you could watch a show about someone drinking bleach. Uh, Simon, yeah. Simon of Push the Point. Uh, what are you drinking Episode 14. Today? Episode 14. What are you drinking today, Simon? <laughs> Push the Point. Well, thanks, Episode thanks for asking. Sorry, stop. Um, <laughs> oh, God. You are, I, am, <laughs> I am drinking uh, an 8.5% Belgian oh, strong beer. Oh, my God. Uh, it it oh looks God. and tastes delicious. Some of you may have heard of it before. It's a fairly famous Belgian strong beer called Delirium. Delirium Tremens. Uh, oh, it's wow. got a... 8.5%. 8.5%, yeah. That's yeah, a lot yeah, of percentages. It would make you delirious. Well, this is going to be an exciting podcast. If you're it's on 8.5%. It's delicious, 5. actually. It doesn't taste like 8.5%. Uh, just drink, knock them back, <laughs> didn't you? <laughs> you lose taste. Yeah. Um, <laughs> by a brewery, which I can't pronounce the name of. Hi, hi, hi. Yeah. <laughs> it's Heineken. Heineken, no, mate. It's not. Hi, hi. 
I swear the kids do that. Literally, that, I've um, got an eleven-year-old, and he just goes, "Hi!" I'm like, what the hell is this noise? <laughs> He's little. Do I know they're 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 all drinking delirium? <laughs> yeah, that's what they give him at school these days. They got rid of milk, and now it's Belgian eight point five percent wheat beers. Is it a wheat oh, beer, it? Simon? It's not a wheat beer. It's uh, oh it, my god! It's a Why are we banging beer? on about the ingredients? Um, is it Higa. a wheat beer, Higa. Simon? Yeah. Anyway, the brewery in Belgium is <laughs> Higa. There you okay. go. So, wild card. Wild Orlando card. Broom, what have you got? <laughs> two drinks trip. Well, I'm also drinking a Belgian beer. Whoa! Yeah, and it's, oh my God, it, this is ridiculous. It's a. Uh, it's. Uh, Why don't you two go kiss in the corner. So this is a Floris passion fruit Ooh. beer. Uh, it's Very a bit fruity. like if you've, if you've ever had a porn star martini. It's basically oh, yes, like actually. the porn star martini yeah. version of a beer because it's got it tastes like passion fruit. It's very, very tasty. So I uh, got it from the corner. I've discovered a new corner shop near where I live, which has an amazing selection of beers. So expect the beer quality to go up astronomically over the next couple of episodes. Astronomically? That's a big promise. Yeah. This Co-op, is a qu- I, you see, I, after my rant, I'm no longer shopping in Main Street. <laughs> no, that's absolute <laughs> bullshit. <laughs> I know. I, I, uh, it's just a good storm. Uh, so I've got my passion fruit beer. So it's very tasty. Uh, this this is a thing for the uh, community. Do you think that uh, Simon and Trip are messaging each other about what are you wear what you're going to wear tonight? Because yeah. I feel like these two are literally cahooting with each other, going, "Oh, Trip, I fancy buying this little bit tonight." You're like, no, <laughs> "Should we, always, go, should it's we always, go in matching?" <laughs> it's always random. We always just go. I always it's go never like random. You're always about, so close. About twenty minutes before we start recording, I remember that I don't have any beers, so I go out and buy something. So I don't and have then the you time. Ask Simon, what are you drinking? And then Simon. he goes, "Well, I think I drink a Belgian beer." And you're like, "I think Ooh, Belgian, I Belgian tonight. Belgian tonight, yes." <laughs> and I was like, "Oh, that sounds like a great idea. Sounds <laughs> very good. Very good. <laughs> very good. Yeah, very good." Um, is that, uh, is that so, how it worked? Yeah. Complete fallacy. Well done, everyone. Let's enjoy our drinks. Simon, you don't mm, have to cheat anymore. Been, you can well, just Simon's already it. been sipping before this podcast Cheers. even began, so yeah. Well, I'm already eight. Cheers, everyone. Down, so. All right. Well, Simon. Well, it's very exciting. Simon, yeah, tell us what we're doing today. Mm. So we have a couple of announcements to make, um, some of which we've been hinting about for the last couple of episodes. Um, we're going to have a bit of a chat about nationals, which is, by the time you listen to this, it's either tomorrow or it's happened already. You should and be traveling there right now. And if you're yeah, not if you right listened now, to this before you're probably that's... in America. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we have an interview with the top ranked female player in the UK, uh, Caitlin, Ooh. which was uh, which was a great, great interview to do. And uh, how could we finish episode 14 of the Pushpoint podcast without going to our favorite new feature? Oh, yeah. Go on, Amish, do the voice. How's it go? Oh my, oh my God. <laughs> da- dance. Oh God, dance forget. for us, Amish. Dance for us. <laughs> yeah, I'm like a monkey. <laughs> what's hot and what's not? Amazing. I love that we're still Game. making him do yeah. it live every time. Yeah, right? just every, we do. No bite. rehearsal. He never knows it's oh, happening. No, no. But... My, wife, my wife actually just comes, every time I do that bit, she'll just go to bed and go, why do you do that? Because <laughs> we make I him... love you less. Every time Hamish, Hamish says that every time he gets undressed now. <laughs> what? Why do you do that? <laughs> I told you before, keep them on. That was the deal. <laughs> oh, God. Um, oh, right, God. so right, we on. have been we have been teasing uh teasing this bit for, for a couple of episodes and Trip was also kind enough to put a single frame in the video from the last episode. Yeah, yeah unfortunately, uh, none I'm... of us can find it, so we no, don't none know. None of us can find it. It's a good luck to you. <laughs> Trip edited yeah. it. I edited but it, and I still can't find it. <laughs> we are very excited to announce that we have some new competition prizes to give away. Woo! And those Woo-hoo! competition prizes are push the point caps. Whoa. Yay! Just in time for winter. Snapbacks, if for, you will. Just in time for nationals, in fact. So. Oh, yeah, even better. Yeah. They we look have... amazing. An they do in-person this. competition to announce at Nationals. So if you're coming to Nationals, if you're playing in either the main event or the ProQuest, if you play one of the Push the Point crew, your name will be entered into a draw for a Push the Point hat. What? But for Simon, every... what if 
well, sorry, <laughs> but Simon, what if you play all three of us or two of us? Do I well, get Hamish, multiple entries? You get one entry per match played against each no. of the Push the Point crew. That's yeah. amazing. And we will be giving and- away two hats at the end of the weekend. What well, happens if yeah. you won two? I want to see a picture of you wearing both No, you, of them. you, you can't win two. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> just to clarify, yeah, so you don't need to beat us. You don't have to, you just have to play us. Um, you, if you win, you know, maybe, maybe don't win. You know, give us a no. That's definitely, that's if definitely true. If you buy true. us a beer, you will be entered into it. I'll, I'll, I'll put your name in again. That's a DQ right there. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> no, but you just have to play us uh, and we'll put your names in a hat at the end of day two. We'll pick them at random. So good luck. Uh, it's all going to be through gems. So it's completely random based on how well we play. You know, we we all three of us could be in the pro quest because we don't make day two, or all three That's of us possible. could be on day two. So it, it it's completely how well we play, uh, depending on whether you get a chance to play against us or not. Uh, but yeah, it should be pretty fun. And um, we'll be mm. giving two caps away at the end. Uh, and we might ask for a photo as well, that we, so we can put on the, the YouTube channel if you're cool with that as well. But the caps are amazing. Like we're also very excited, and we'll be sporting them on the day, so you'll be able to see what they look like as well, and be able to quickly see that we who we are. Because you, I assume most Brilliant. people have seen our faces, but probably not everyone. So uh... I'd love to see what both of you would look like in a hat because obviously i go to events and i have my snap back wear it backwards because i'm you know sick as fuck but <laughs> <laughs> but, but <laughs> the pair of you wearing your hats I, I i'll be intrigued you might be you know especially you simon like you know dad cool if yeah. you've ever seen Twenty One Jump Street, that is uh, that's how I'm going to roll with a snapback on. I, no, um... dude, when you come in with a snapback, Limp Bizkit <laughs> has made their new song called Dad Vibes. That is you. <laughs> yeah, I, I don't. I don't normally wear hats. I've got quite big hair, so generally, you might be if, cool, I, man. if I wear a hat, the hair just goes up and out. Uh, but yeah, I'm going to get. I'm you... specifically getting my hair cut just for this cap. That's how oh, dedicated yeah. I am to the baseball Ooh. cap. Yeah. So. Ooh. So there one we of the re- well. One of the reasons we've been able to um, source these caps for our competition giveaways um, is we are trying to do the best for our community and for our avid listeners. So we've had giveaways all the way along, but what we really want to do is make this better for you. We want to give bigger prizes, we want to have more competition, and we want to produce better content. And in that vein... We've also got some other news to announce today, and we are launching our Patreon. Ooh! Ooh. Finally! Yeah. This has been in this has been in the uh, pipeline for a little while now. So, yeah. Yeah, we've been working on it for a bit, trying to make sure that it's sort of reasonable and the right thing to do. Uh, but we think we're we it's 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 a good time. The podcast has been going now for fourteen episodes. If you haven't heard. Uh, and yeah. we, we kind of want to invest a bit more in what we're doing. We still, all three of us, just do this in random rooms in our house with mics that we bought from Amazon, <laughs> like the cheapest oh, possible. Yeah. So that, oh, I don't know about you, me. but mine is literally, you can, you guys can see it, it, it is literally falling apart. Uh, so we would like to <laughs> we like invest new mics, a little please. bit more. In, <laughs> and we do all the editing, like Hamish does all the sound editing and I do all the well, all the video editing there's not really that much video editing and hamish edits the videos that simon does the push the pat one pick ones yeah. uh and yeah we we, <laughs> we if, it, if you feel comfortable supporting us then that would be great there are going to be some benefits but just to say you obviously don't have to join the patreon we're still going to be making the podcast and we're still going to be engaging with everyone our audience and we really enjoy bringing the community in but this is just a way for us to invest more in what we do kind of take the podcast to the next level i guess so we'll stick the link in the description of the YouTube video and we'll probably share it around at some oh point. God. Why does uh, my beer taste like, smell like soap? What have you done to your, have you, did you not rinse your glass out or something? Oh, well, no, I, was, I don't know. He's I just smelling know. his beer, ladies and gentlemen, at the moment. I'm just impressed that we're 16 minutes in and we've not talked about Flesh and Blood once. <laughs> Let's do it. <laughs> Simon, come on. Well, we are we are we are we just are we going in? What are we doing? Are we are we Simon? Help! 
Hold my hand, Simon. <laughs> <laughs> I just, I, I wish I could have gone longer with the panic on Hamish's face. Like he's not saying you anything. Don't. What do I do? You've, you've got a face. You've got a face like a like like two kids were got into a bed and fighting over a toy. <laughs> it's funny you should say that. Um, moving swiftly on. <laughs> right, as we've said already, nationals, the UK nationals, which you may or may not have heard, are the first national championships to be held for flesh and blood in the year 2021 so we as a nation have a responsibility to uh, show the world what a good meta looks like in the yeah. tales of aria series i can hear the sniggering of these uh, kiwis from here <laughs> <laughs> it may be oh, the wow. first and only chance we get gents um, <laughs> yeah exactly yeah. <laughs> Follow our don't, lead, boys. Don't screw, this. It, don't screw it up, guys. <laughs> who, who won? <laughs> it's Dorinthia. There we go. <laughs> the meta has evolved. <laughs> meta Rinthia, imagine. Yeah. Oh. Well, and then won? everyone goes out playing Dorinthia. It's yeah, like, oh, it, good God, what have we done? What, yeah, what have we done? Oh, it's welcome to Rafe. <laughs> before, before we get too into the gameplay side of things for Nationals, I just want to say I'm so excited... It's been uh, trips dubbed it Natsmus this week. Um, oh, that was and, good. Yeah, like and that. he's on yeah. a bit of a countdown. I'm so excited, partly because it's the first nationals that we will have had in the UK, but also because mm. a real friend of our podcast, Fabio, who has helped us with giveaways and um, competitions in the past, he they are running this. Living Realms are running this event on a huge scale. They've gone out and hired a massive, massive mm. event space at the Leeds Armouries Museum, amazing. which is amazing. And um, they, they've they got a whole team of judges. They've got a whole team of staff to keep everyone in order. There's going to be side events and drafts going on all over the place with loads of space. And I know they've been super conscious about keeping everything spaced out and social distancing and making sure nothing's too crowded i just i can't wait to see what they've got in store for us guys because I, I know they're going to have done a, such a good job yeah based on the road to nationals that uh, we all went to they 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 put out an amazing event there so honestly like this you know it's fully deserved this is this is going to be sick also just a quick push out as well that we have a uh, tabletop 24 as well that is going to be streaming the event at Living Realms as well. So, and that, and that's also another um, uh, pro content creator that is doing some really hard work to really make sure that this, um, like the all the streaming and everything they do, uh, is as best. So they've streamed. Be. They streamed the Manuscrew Road to Nationals, didn't they? Top and table. It was very good. <clears throat> it was, it was great. very good. So th this is this is it. This is gearing up to be sick. Yeah, it's going to be a huge, big festival of the game and uh, a chance for people to play against each other on a grand scale we've obviously had road to nationals and while some of us did travel around the country to play and lots of the most of people just stuck to their home turf so this is really going to be the whole well not the whole uk community not obviously obviously not everyone's going to be there and it, it obviously if you can't make it um there will be other opportunities in the future but we are really excited about it nonetheless it's going to be an amazing opportunity to meet people to see people uh that you might not have met before that you know through the discord community through the fab community it's going to be fantastic and i think it's going to be a really interesting tournament uh we touched on how we're the first nationals that's taking place and although we've had pro quest events at the calling that have seen new c and uh, cc decks out there uh, getting an idea of what works and what doesn't this is going to be a huge big test of classic constructed uh and can hopefully be a, a resource for people who are watching to see what is good. Because uh, we do have good players in the UK. Uh, we like to take the piss mm -hmm. out of ourselves. But actually, there's some really strong players in the UK who've been playing for a really long time now. You've been there, maybe not since the very beginning, but pretty early days. And are going to go out there who've been practicing, who've been testing, who want to do really, really, really well at this tournament. And hopefully will do well. So I'm excited to see what does well. I'm excited. I hope that the three of us do okay. I think... We want to have fun. We want to meet people uh, as push the point. Uh, so obviously, if you see us there, please come up to us and chat to us about the game, about the podcast. We're more than happy to talk to you. Uh, we'll be sporting our caps so you can find us nice and easily. 
Uh, oh, but, yeah. but yeah, I mean, what are you guys most excited about? Are you just excited about the main tournament, or what, what are you what are you most looking forward to? I think with this scale of event, the thing I'm most looking forward to is just mingling with people and sitting down mm -hmm. against people that I may or may not have played before. But I know that everyone there is going to be on top form, and there's nothing better than sitting down and playing people who are in the form of their life and and giving you good games game after game after game i i really can't wait yeah i'm the, the, i think i'm looking for well i'm clearly looking forward to the event but i think deep somewhere deep down i'm really really looking forward to saturday night really to be <laughs> i mean it might sound silly but it's one of the very rare opportunities that i think a lot of us can uh, are going to go through where um not all of us can stay in a hotel overnight after an event so a lot of us every time we finish an event you know we've got to we've got to get back mm. and get home to our lives yeah. but, it, but this we're all it's like a you know slides night out or whatever you know maybe we're not going to go get on it but just to think we've done the event and then everyone goes where are we going where should we hang where should we chill out where do we just grab a beer and just like simon said just mingling just be in around the people that we've been getting to know over this 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 you know a year a couple of months whatever um that i'm really really excited for purely because i don't want to think about the event because i'm nervous because i've been practicing so much i don't want to get too into that but it's I, i'm just like i'm just really like, again it's the people man it's bringing people together for the love of games whatever flesh and blood's title yeah games, great games history. playing yeah. great games playing great um, games this 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 might be slightly crazy, but um, I think I'm most looking forward, to, and, and Hamish is going to kill me, but I think I'm most looking forward to playing Blitz, what? which is going to make me so unpopular. But I've Simon not played Blitz even in like so long, yawning. and I I love I love Blitz, guys. It, it's fun. yeah. Well, you, did, it's you just... said to, you said a couple of episodes Blitz is over. I'm yeah, it CC, is. And now you're yeah, and coming into a CC event. You're into Blitz. Make up your mind, wild card boy. CNC is the best format, but I Blitz is just like it's like hamburger, right? Like it. It's just trashy food that you can just... Yeah, I just enjoy it. And, um, like, I just love playing it so much. And I've not played it in such a long time. Because I just played it almost exclusively for a very long time. So I'm really looking forward to that. I think that's going to be really funny. I've been chatting to some of the other players. And it, it just feels like everyone's going to bring, like, the weirdest stuff to this battle hard and stuff. To this battle hard event. And I just think, yeah, it could be a good laugh. I think that will have less pressure than the actual main tournament. So I think I'll yeah. actually end up enjoying that a lot more. Uh, I course. think that's why I'm looking forward to it because I think it's going to be really funny. Yeah. Uh, and yeah, the main tournament, obviously looking forward to that, but we'll see how that goes. <laughs> oh, wow. Okay. So this is what we're looking forward to, guys. Should we, uh, should we swing this over to uh, an awesome interview? Sounds good to me. Hello and welcome back to Push the Point uh, with me, Simon. And today we're joined by Caitlin Sweeney. Now, you may know Caitlin, uh, previously Caitlin Woods, uh, if any of you have played at Living Realms or further north in the country, you will, I'm sure, have met Caitlin. She's currently top 20 on the 90 Day XP leaderboard. And we found out following qualification for nationals that she is a rare breed. She's one of only four women to have qualified for our UK nationals events. Um, so we have Caitlin with us today for an interview. Uh, how are you feeling today, Caitlin? You good? Yeah, I'm great. Thanks for having me, Sai. Uh, no problem. Thank you for coming on. So, Caitlin, we we met, uh, I think it was probably at the Boards and Swords event. Uh, back yeah, in, in Derby. In Derby, yeah, back in July or June, maybe. Um, and since then, you and Chris, I, I think we should probably mention Chris, Chris Sweeney, uh, otherwise known as Towering Titan on YouTube. Um, you guys have been on an absolute tear. How, how have you been... How have you been doing playing events recently? Uh, it's been absolutely awesome. Um, we were looking for another card game to get into. So previously, we've spent the last... played a bit longer than Chris. Played, spent the last 10 years playing um, Game of Thrones, the card game, which was an LCG. So we used to play at the local level, um, national and then internationally. So we spent a lot of our time traveling around oh, wow. Europe, competing in European tournaments. Um, 
kind of like our road to nationals we had a mm. uh, road to starlet which was our um european championship so yeah we got to travel all over and make a lot of friends and we really missed it when they stopped supporting organized play for the game yeah um so we were looking at something else to get into um and then chris got into flesh and blood and i said i wasn't really interested until there was a competitive scene and we could play face to face so yeah, that's fair yeah so he's chris has been playing since um january um when we were in lockdown he, he played a lot of the online tournaments and i i just don't have the time or the confidence to play online um especially when i can't read the cards because that's my big issue yeah. I, I don't know all of the cards and i don't really care to learn them all either so yeah everyone will probably know me grabbing cards and reading <laughs> them and trying to put them in place um so when it started out for the the skirmish season around june july time it was blitz i think i played in my first tournament yeah um that's that's when i started um actually paying attention to the game and getting into it so around monarch and i mean i know you as a an avid prison player is that who you started off with or did you test a few different uh decks before that ah uh, right um i went off um what Chris had suggested to me. See, in, in Game of Thrones, I was House Martell, whether they were doing well or they were doing bad. And in my opinion, they stopped getting supported through the game. Uh, so they just got progressively worse. But because I loved the theme, I stuck with them uh. and I, I wasn't having a good time at tournaments. So Chris said, um, you know, you're coming in to play this game. I want you to play, but I want you to have a good time. So listen to him and stop sticking with the same thing all the time. Okay. So for Blitz, uh, I started playing Ira, um, yes. which yes, I, I know it's one of the best Blitz decks, and, and I had a lot of fun with it, um, and it, it's easy to play, it's not too much to get your head around, so yeah, I had a lot of fun with Ira, um, and then for Constructed, Chris suggested Prism, because he just thought I'd really like the play style, and he was right, I love Prism, so you, you... And every... You've been doing well with Prism as well. I mean, you you've been really pushing pushing the deck forward. Uh, yeah, I, I've only made some slight edits to my sideboard through playing. So uh, mainly at Armory events, that's that's what I take. Um, I have tried a couple of other heroes. Um, I think I've played a little bit of Warrior. Um, just to get a feel for the the other heroes. But yeah, I love Prism, so I take it every week when i'm competing in armory events and just tweak it from there i i think you've hit the nail on the head really it's, it's about enjoying the game and finding something that you enjoy about the game uh and it's just great to hear the enthusiasm in your voice when you talk about playing prism so that's awesome and you use prism pretty much for the whole road to national season uh which is not too long ago ended how did it feel when you found out you'd qualified for nationals uh, wow, it felt awesome to realise that I'd qualified. Um, I, I thought I could probably do it. I didn't think I'd qualify quite as high up as I did. But me and Chris, we love the game, so we put in a lot of effort um, farming XP, going to a lot of events, so a lot of armories. And it was great for confidence as well, playing in those casual level events. Um, mm. To see how the deck worked and to meet other players and you know it was quite a welcoming environment and it just made us want to play more so every chance we got we played in every armory <laughs> around the northeast and talking about nationals how how has preparation been for nationals like what have you been up to to get ready uh, considering it's less than a week away now which is quite exciting yeah bit of a sore point so <laughs> in the run-up to nationals we had road to nationals that was fine we had the time um, Chris has went on to 12 hour shifts now, so oh, luckily no. he put in his holidays for nationals. So he, he does have that off, but we've got two, we, we had our wedding, then we've got another wedding to go to. Um, and just trying to find the time around work to do some solid prep for it. It's been quite difficult. So it's going to be a mad scramble next week to maybe get in some decent games. No, that, no, yeah, that's fair. And I think if you're both busy, you're sort of sharing the workload there, which is an interesting way to approach it. No, absolutely. And we will have a few games. We'll build some um, tier one decks and play against each other and try and get a feel for what 
we think we'll be up against. Um, I, I currently have no idea. Maybe a lot of prism. I could be one of them. Who knows? Who knows? Um, <laughs> we'll just see how it goes next week. How much practice we can get in. I, Might I be think... a case on my side. I'm slightly winging it. <laughs> I know the feeling and I think a lot of people have said similar things so with with having sort of put so much time and effort in in the grind to get qualified for nationals and, and road to national season they've had to now um, sort of pay that back to either work or family time and you know you can't ha you can't necessarily put that level of effort in all the time it's just with the meta change now with Tales of Aria release, things have changed a bit more than maybe people thought they might with um, with Chain and the Seeds of Agony ban. So it's an interesting change, not only on the sort of meta point of view, but also on, on people's ability to commit the time. So I think you, you're probably saying similar things to a lot of people thinking around the country. Yeah, and it's absolutely right. I, for one, I wasn't really expecting nationals to be so close to the end of the road mm. to national um i don't know whether i should have expected that but yeah trying to find the time you, you've played solidly for three months trying to get your points up deck testing and and yeah life is in the way so you can't pay that time all the time yeah um so yeah maybe prep for nationals has suffered a little bit because of that but you know I, i've played the deck that i think that i'm probably going to play for nationals yeah. And I, I've done what testing I can, um, less so against the new heroes and constructed. Um, I had a lot of fun at the pre-releases for um, Tales of Aria. That was really good. I do yeah. like the new heroes. They are fun. Yeah. Um, yeah, we ended up going, I think, to four pre-releases oh, wow. for first edition, and then we we went to one last week. Um, so doing a mixture of sealed and drafts. And how have you been getting on in the limited play? uh really really good it, it's a good experience i haven't played a lot of draft i think that was probably be my weakest mm. one for sealed i think all of the tales of aria pre-releases were sealed um we did four i won two with briar wow um, that's a good record two from four yeah not bad chris won uh the living realms one and then I made the final at EH Gaming, um, the last one that we did. Uh, we managed to squeeze that in. We did two on the, the last Sunday. <laughs> A form so... formidable power couple in flesh and blood, it seems. Yeah. <laughs> maybe, maybe just luck. But yeah, I really, I really enjoy Briar, which I guess is a bit of a cop out since everyone tries to play Briar. But really, really good in that format. Um, I did absolutely terrible in the pre-release on the Saturday at Living Realms because I, I had Lexi. Wasn't anything else I could make. So I was like, right, great. We'll play Lexi. I'm sure this is fun. And oh my God, I think I uh, won two games and lost four. Oh no. <laughs> not, not the best. And then I went back to Briar after that. Um, but yeah, I really like the sealed format. I do like the draft. I find that a lot more difficult. I'm not very good at determining what everyone else is playing. Yeah and i'm too scared to draft something then change my mind so i kind of lock myself in quite early that's a big step. Um, yeah it's a big it's a big decision yeah i i think i pretty much make my decision within the first five cards depending on what i get i'm like yeah if i got some good pulls we'll stick with this i also find it really hard to know when to draft your armor right when yeah, you've yeah. got really really good cards as well and you've got your piece of armor and you're kind of like ah yeah so i, I think yeah. uh, it's definitely tough and everyone has a slightly different draft style is what i'm finding um it's it's a really i'm, I'm glad they've incorporated it in the nationals event uh, it'd be really interesting to see how it changes things or doesn't change things in terms of the standing so uh, yeah I'm, I'm personally looking forward to that well i will admit i'm slightly worried about that the draft instead of it but we'll see how it goes i'm sure it'll be fun uh, exactly and i just want to i just want to move on before we finish and um again thank you for your time today but it's maybe slightly controversial topic um how are you finding playing as a woman in this sort of male dominated scene i think with only four women going to um nationals 
there's quite a big discrepancy there like how have you been getting on uh, yeah i really wasn't expecting there to be so few women represented at nationals um you always expect women to be the minority mm. um which is to say women don't like card games because plenty of us do mm. um even through game of thrones you know you had you know at least 10 20 percent of the field let's go 10 um represented by women like you know i had, I had female friends within the thrones community so yeah it's definitely something that is lacking even on a casual level i haven't been to many events where there have been other, other women um yeah. which is a real shame i personally find it fine i'm not very intimidated playing at this level um in a male dominated field i will talk to anyone um and push my way in there i think you as a woman you're at risk of being taken less seriously um and I, I think you can be dismissed as not being very good quicker than um a, a man say would be yeah um so i've had a few occasions where people have you know been a bit shocked that I, i've done so well uh which you know it can be a, a bit insulting but i am still a fairly new player so i'll not take that all as a, a sexist kind of remark yeah um I think it is a difficult one. I think when you do have a male dominated player base, you know, more effort needs to be made when you do have female players. So you're kind of including them in your conversations. Mm. Um, there's been quite a few times where I've bullied my way in there and just started talking, whether anyone wants me to talk or not, <laughs> I'm not fussed, but for someone who's maybe not as outgoing or as forward as I am, you know, it is quite difficult to break into that and get into the conversations and be, Traitors. oh yeah they're one of us they play yeah. flesh and blood yeah and i want to hear about how they're finding it um it can be easy to to just sort of sink into the background i guess and if you don't if you're not as outgoing as someone like yourself then it it, it could be tricky yeah absolutely i mean if you want women to feel welcome playing a card game um through from casual to competitive play make them feel welcome yeah uh, everyone has manners everyone knows how to talk to each other include them uh, be interested in what they're playing. Try to help. Make them comfortable. Um, just the same as you would do anyone else. Um, maybe a bit more effort needs to be made in that respect. Um, one other thing I say, would say I've found as a woman is playing a game. I think immediately as you sit down, unless they know who you are, they think if you're playing against a man, they seem to think that they've got an easy game and when it starts swinging in your favor or you win the game i've definitely experienced more what would be described as salty behavior oh, really? than i think i would have if um i had have been male um and I, it could be me reading into it too mm. much um, I, I try not to um but yeah and that's been through every card game that i've played oh, okay so it's not that's not just unique to flesh and blood then it's definitely not no and so you've you've mentioned sort of 10 percent turnouts for for women females at, at other card game events you've been to um we've got four percent roughly at the nationals uh how how do we get more women involved in flesh and blood what what do you think's holding them back that's a really hard one to say i mean with game of thrones you've got the the tv series you had mm. the books so people already had some kind of investment in it yeah. before they started playing um so i think that attracted a wider audience um you're always going to have um, in my opinion fewer females playing so i guess the only thing i could say is provide that encouraging yeah. welcoming atmosphere you know it if you know any females who are interested or want want to learn to play you know invite them along don't make it a big thing um it's quite intimidating mm. to come into a room full of men playing a game that they all know when you don't and just the same as any new starter uh include them in the conversations and i i, I mean that you there's some really great points there and i think we can all be mindful of making new people welcome definitely and I hope that the community has been welcoming so far and I hope we can continue to be that sort of um, community that brings people up to a level and gets them involved and gets them ready for competitive play. But um, I know some 
some at some point we all fall down on on those standards and we we should help hold ourselves and each other to a higher standard so i think you've made some really good points and i, I want to thank you for that yeah absolutely um you know the any negative experience i've had while playing flesh and blood has always been the exception not the rule i generally generally find um communities really really welcoming and you know they're happy to talk to me happy to include me and you know i have made a lot of friends through that um one other thing i would say make sure your store has a decent toilet <laughs> because I, as a female that is one thing we do not like being subjected to a shared toilet with men for you know a 12 hour day of playing games i i can assure so, you that i don't like having to share a toilet with uh 50 or 60 <laughs> other men for the day either um but no i i very much get your point um so caitlin i really want to thank you again for taking the time today to come and have a chat with me and uh and us on push the point i think it's been really insightful and um you've given us some really good things to think about is there anything you want to say just before we finish no i think i'm all talked out so thank you very much simon i hope what i've said has been helpful Abs and yeah absolutely and uh, i'm sure anyone that wants to come and say hello to you at nationals uh will be able to do so now you've now you've made it clear how outgoing you are oh absolutely yes i'll probably scare some people off i don't stop talking <laughs> good good all right thank you very much and uh have a good day thank you you too right i just want to touch on this very briefly because we've talked about it before but we've just had two weekends in a row of um sealed calling events and for the first one i felt like i was watching the streams and i was quite interested for about the first three games and then i realized in tales of aria sealed you just get to see the top tables of briar mirror versus briar mirror versus briar mirror yeah and i boring. i don't know what yeah i it got to a point where it was quite samey if everyone had slightly different decks but it was the same briar mirror every time and uh, i I must admit that the coverage was good and they had some good commentary, but it didn't really spice up until it got to draft when people started branching out. I don't know if you guys noticed similar things. Or I, I completely agree issues. with you, Simon. Like it, honestly, it 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 does feel like a flaw of the format uh, that this sealed is just it's just Briar and and we've seen that play out twice now at two big calling events. Yeah. I just don't think that this sealed should be a competitive. Uh, format uh, i think i think draft is fine but i think it just it doesn't feel very entertaining to watch briar mirrors constantly and even with just three heroes in the set it, it gets very samey i don't think it's something like i think as a competitive format fine but i think as t uh, you know tv coverage i don't think it i don't think it hits quite home as um blitz or or the main is classic constructed. There's nothing better than seeing a classic constructed match, in my opinion. When they moved over to the Pro Quest, yeah, I wonder if they missed the trick by not streaming more, yeah, of the Pro Quest. Well, all everyone was talking about was wanting to watch that uh, chain Bravo final in the Pro Quest, yeah, yeah. Uh, and like, and everyone seemed to be want that we would have been an amazing game to watch to see Chain back in a final again. But unfortunately, <laughs> well, yeah. you know, it was draft. It no, was still it, a good it was game. It was still a really good game. That Oldham game was great. I don't get me wrong, but man, we love the we love the the CC. And I think in the future, I'd like to see uh, this is obviously more investment, but having simulcasts or or multiple Twitch channels to show both those games at the same time. Just pick the one you want to watch. That I was going to say. I think but... I think LSS have been quite responsive to this in the past uh, to feedback, and I think that as the game grows and they get more people not just playing the game, but also on the production side of things. That might be something they look to do. And the simulcasting yeah. thing, having sort of two Twitch streams up at the same time where you can pick and choose might be a good idea. No, yeah, I, I agree. Yeah, and I thought that, you know, we don't want to talk about the calling too much. We, we're making this a mostly Nats-focused episode. Uh, but I did enjoy it. Um, I enjoyed the commentary. I thought the commentary was good. Yeah, um, they were very I good. I really, I thought they picked some great guys, um, and I'm really excited to see what is in store for our calling in Europe coming up in December. 
uh, and what we will. Well, that's a main ECC, so that is going to be. It, it, like, it's going to be really good fun. I love yeah. watching CC games. What yeah. I did like about the commentary specifically was, um, so Tan and Grace works as a, a as a really good front man for the commentary team, and he's got a mm. really good um, charismatic way of linking segments. But they got a really good player on uh, Rob Seigel, who's been um, producing content oh, yeah. and playing games. Yeah, he's Rob's cool. good. Player. And Maybe he's not to everyone's taste, but he knows the game inside and out. And having his insight into plays that were ongoing during the event this weekend was such a, a breath of fresh air. And it allowed, I think it educated not just us, but also the rest of the commentary team. Yeah, I saw him cast like a Tome of Divinity turn uh, of Prism, which is generally uh, played out pretty quickly as well by the Prism player. Um, and it was pretty impressive, you know, following that stuff. It's not easy. Yeah. You can't do it unless you know the game. And it was not just that, just saying like, you know, what is what is this prison player actually working towards what they're trying to do? It's good stuff. And it's like you, having that mix is really nice. But I, I think it's really important to have someone on the casting table that knows the game. Uh, I mean, um, <laughs> that sounds d stupid. Of course they should. But actually, maybe it's some things you don't get that. You just get big names. And it's good to have a mix of good personality. Rob's got good personality as well. No offense, Rob. But uh, yeah, it was good to have actual really in-depth understanding of the game on the table and that was really important for my enjoyment of watching those callings agreed do the voice right. hamish do the voice uh, <laughs> uh, oh, what's hard and what's not motherfucker that was much very fast and a little bit higher than normal but i liked it oh. so what's hot what's not everybody we're bringing what's it hard? back Welcome. we're bringing it back every time do we have to say i'm bringing it back now because we do it every single episode because oh, yeah, it's because... an official segment of push the point Mm -hmm. um, but we're doing it a bit differently this time, aren't we, Simon? Aren't we? Are we? We are. I think. I think we should. We gave our full breakdown of what's hot and what's not in the last episode. And it sent Simon to sleep, so he wants to do it a little bit quicker this time. Look, there's a lot so. of heroes in the game these days, guys. It's not like the old days when we were playing and there was only eight heroes. Now there's like fifteen. <laughs> I think. Yeah, Maybe there's more. loads. There's loads of them. So yeah. So what, what do you we... do? Top eight. Bloody, bloody Who's loads, get top mate. Eight? Who's so, going to get top eight in Nats? Yeah. Give us your breakdown, yeah. Hamish, of top eight heroes Ooh, at Hamish the UK the National Championships. Oh, me. Okay. Um, oof. I'm going to go with, with Briar, Earth Briar. I think she's going to make a top eight. I think a Bravo is going to make a top eight. I th also think that Dash could sneak her way in. I think a Prism could sneak their way in. I think I'll leave it as that. I think those are the four most likely heroes to grace into the top eight. I don't know how many, but that's. Uh, I think Earth a, a mix of those four. Show. Okay, mm. a mix of those four is my opinion. Simon trip. Oh, do I have to go? <laughs> yeah, we'll Tripper do. We'll man. do. We'll do it in drink. We'll do it in drink order. So that's okay. Simon next, right. isn't it? Simon, uh, I'll take one. Um, oh. <laughs> so I think. I think Dash, I think Bravo, yeah. I think Prism. Mm. Because this is the UK, I think there will be a Dory and I think there will be a Katsu. Oh, okay. In the top eight? In the top eight. Yeah, maybe. And as a wild card. Oh, we're doing a wild card. All right, I didn't do one, but um, go for it. I think there'll be one new hero in the top eight from Tales right, of Aria. Okay. Yeah, Azalea. Right, Trip. What's he? <laughs> right. Pretty simple for me. Two Briar. Oh, we're doing a break. I oh, know. Oh, oh God, he's doing two. Two Bravo. He's not putting it all on black. He's putting them on the numbers. Shit. Two. Two Prism. One Dash, and one Rhino. Oh, Rhino. Yeah. Is that your wild card? Spice. Nice. All right. I think God, I need a Rhino on top eight. I need That's a wild card. Um, and I reckon the dash play will come because of the Rhino cry. Oh, no. <laughs> Jeez, I need a, I need a, I need a wild card. I didn't, I didn't put one in. Um, well, there are my four. Uh, what's my wild card? I'm gonna go with Lexi. It's actually not a bad shout, you know. Yeah, yeah I think that's. I think there. I think we'll see a, a couple of Lexis on day two. 
Uh, and if they yeah. draft well, I think they could get to the top eight. Because it's really a, more about the... If you make day two, it's more about the draft, really, isn't it? Like, I was going to say, actually... Ne- what's your, what, who are you naming? You're saying there's a, a new hero. What do you think that new hero would be? It's got to be Briar, mate. Got to be well, he's already said Briar. Oh, I, didn't, you, I did not say Briar. He didn't, didn't say, he didn't say Briar. So on, who do you think? It's, it's got to be Briar. <laughs> Don't you dare say Oldham, mate. <laughs> the, the Oldham dream. I'll be honest. If 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 Oldham makes it to the top eight, I uh, how many games will go to new time? Hat. Like I will not eat that new hat because it looks too good. Um, yeah, yeah. I would be surprised if Oldham makes it to the top eight purely because the games I've played against Oldham tend to go to time. Anyway, I would say of Briar and Lexi. The one I would choose most likely to get to the top eight would be Briar. Okay, yeah. so they, you think Briar's the wild card? Yes. All right. I'm lightning just straight or up earth, two boys. Two, lightning or earth? Oh, two to earth. I do like the lightning build, but I think two earth. Yeah, I think earth's the probable one after seeing the gauntlet. Didn't I thought uh, I thought Briar was going to be not as solved as she, I thought, but I think people are starting to twig what she can cap- do. God English. I think people are starting to twig what she can do. After you know my love of the sealed and draft. You know my love of going wide. I, I'll say lightning. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh Simon, you cheat, you old dog. You, you. you can take the <laughs> guy out of Katsu, but you can't take the Katsu out of the guy. Out out of the anyway, guy. everyone, that was the what's hot ones last like, so Yeah, <laughs> we'll there you go, it. everyone. I hope you enjoyed. <laughs> Well, yeah, I, so I think is, is are we. I think that's we we're, we're through, right? We're wrapping oh, it up. Oh God! Right? Well, everyone, I feel like we actually stuck along. to time on a podcast. We I actually stuck to this. time. Uh, so, thank you so much, everyone. If you're listening to this before that, we would love to. Could please come and say hello to us. Um, yeah. During Don't. the event, before the event, after the event, come to my house. Not we need a secret code just... word for people to tell us that they like they've listened to the podcast when they come and see no, us. Just, don't, just don't, don't be a stranger. Don't worry about talking to oh, us. Oh, code both... words. Oh yeah, that's when you know you've listened to it. Um, just say, uh, I don't know. I'll have one comfortizer. There you go. Oh. I'll have one. Yeah, comfortizer. just be like, can I get you a comfortizer, mate? Yes. Yeah. That's be it. It. I like it. Can I get you a comfortizer? If I'm like... sat in the corner crying because I've lost all my games, just come over and say, "Can I get you a comfortizer, mate?" And everything will be better. I think. I think you should legitimately, you know, if you don't do make top twenty four, if any of us don't make top twenty four, I think we've got to have a comfortizer. So can I have one appetizer and uh, some, southern comfort? Some southern comfort. <laughs> I, yeah. <laughs> it's not that. It's <laughs> it's really terrible. Uh, right, it would guys. be a good incentive to make top 24. <laughs> <laughs> that would be brilliant. I, I can tell you, I'm, I'm already gunning to try and make top 24 because I know what that shit tastes like. <laughs> right. Enjoy naps, everyone. Talk to us. We'll talk to you. Have a great time. Win lots of games. Enjoy lots of games. And I hope it goes good for everyone. See you later. See like, you later. subscribe, give us your money. See ya. <laughs> Bye. Bye. <laughs> <laughs>